I'm actually uh, in front of the perfect setting. Um, I was always fascinated by nature, um, by its beauty, by its variety, by its ability to transform and adapt to its environment. Furthermore, I was always interested in the relationship that we have with the natural environment and all the interactions that we take with and within it, what we are able to build out of it, and which role it actually plays in our lives. And I guess it all started while I was a child, and um, nature was just always um, appearing to me as the biggest playground imaginable. And uh, I have all these memories of my childhood um, playing with them within nature, and the satisfaction of being able to build almost anything imaginable just with what surrounds me, from interior for our, in our hidden headquarter with my friends, to small ecosystems just with some pond water and algae started appearing out of nothing, to like natural dyes made of crushed vegetables, or experimental soups made of the seasonal fruits that just fell off the trees. It always felt like that anything is possible to build with it, and that there are endless opportunities. And looking back at this time, I realized that almost anything I built was actually made of plants. And this fascination still continues. But besides me, if you look how humankind actually developed, it's quite in a similar way. We evolved by the tools we built, what nature provided us, and we actually started at a very early stage, making advantage of biological processes. And even if we haven't had the scientific knowledge at that time, we were able to activate complicated processes in nature, um, manipulate our environment, and make advantage for agriculture, for food, for medicine, and even art. And the manipulation of our crops for agriculture actually influenced the human civilization. It influenced that we started settling down and it shaped and influenced also how our world is shaped today. But often actually in a quite negative way. If you look at in what industrialization, globalization, mass production did, it led us to treat our natural environment more like a produce than actually the natural environment we want to live in. And the solutions that we provided often caused actually more problems. If you think about the chemical pesticides that we put on our fields every year, or the droughts and all the wastewater that we have from agriculture. But new technologies, including synthetic biology, promise us new solutions for problems for agriculture, for food, for medicine, for health. And that not only on an industrial level, it also could be a tool for the, our mass to be able to create their own solutions because nature is accessible to everyone. But if we want to go in such a direction, we have to be aware that each of those interactions is actually a manipulation of our environment, and that will have a bigger impact on our ecosystem. And if we have to think about that, all those interactions, uh, that we can't interact actually with something without affecting it, and that will also affect us back. Uh, John Donne wrote 400 years ago, no man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. So if we want to go in such a biological direction, we have to think about how it actually affects us. And if we want to place biology in such a direction, and we have to adapt a profound knowledge about nature, and we have to think about the processes in nature, we have to understand them, and we have to understand how they are interacted and connected with our environment. So I started to imagine that I'm able and possible to look beyond the physical properties of nature and to make our processes in nature, the interactions, the interconnections of our ecosystem visible, accessible, and understanding, understandable for us. So I asked myself the two questions in the beginning. Can we use technology to translate the language of nature to have a positive impact? And can we create tools that let us reconnect with nature and decode it? So I continued with working with plants and started looking beyond the physical properties and looking into their functions and um, into their processes. And they are really fascinating because they obviously can't move, 
but there's a constant conversation going on between plants and their environment. They constantly have to adapt to it and react to it to survive. And how they are doing that, or one way how they are doing that, is actually for electrochemical signals that communicate in the plant itself how to react to different environmental stimuli. And those signals we are actually able to capture. So we engineered a simple device that we can connect to the plant itself to read those signals. You can imagine it a little bit to, similar to how we actually capture our own biosignals. <coughs> and computation can help us to not only capture those, to analyze those and filter the right signals all out, but also to identify patterns um, of the signals reacting to the different environmental stimuli to actually give us the ability to translate them and to build a database of biosignals of our environment. So here, for example, we see a Venus flytrap. And a Venus flytrap has tiny hairs inside the little trap. And to know when it has to close uh, to catch an insect, you have to stimulate it twice and then it closes. And that is actually what you just saw in the video but also see in the signal exactly when the little hair gets stimulated and you even see the motion of the closing of the trap. So it's pretty precise what we are able to see. And because I showed you, for example, a Venus flytrap, we also have to understand that there are actually different dialects in nature. And computer vision can help us to identify and connect with the right database, with the right tree that you're connected with. So I started thinking of like how can we actually make that now to something meaningful? How can we translate those signals that matter to us, uh, that we can relate to those and make advantage of those? So we created a platform where you can customize your functions and your interactions with the natural environment. It is a visual programming language that lets you connect with the tree, then choose from the right database, and you can choose the signal that you are interested in and then connect it with a notification type that matters for you. So you can decide if the Venus flytrap gives you a call when it catched another fly, or if you can make the sunflower um, connect to a fertilizer machine to, um, to help itself. Um, but what else would be like application for something like that? But if, for example, the chemical pesticides that I mentioned before are a big problem for our environment. Imagine if we have an opportunity to actually know when our plants are attacked and not just randomly put six times a year all these chemicals on our fields. We could save not a lot of money, we could also protect our environment in a better way. Or think about in an urban context and creating cities, greener, smarter cities, and the ability that you and me connect to green land and urban farming. But also imagine if we would have the opportunity to understand better how plants have to adapt and behave into space. Or just think about how beautiful it would be if you could see your ecological footprint real time told by nature itself. But during my research and capturing all these signals, I realized that I was not only perceiving messages from the plant, that I actually was sending messages to the plant. To explain that a little bit, to, to gather a database of different signals, I had to prove if that light really causes that signal or if the closing of a Venus flytrap really looks like this. So I started wondering if I can actually use a plant and the network of a plant as a conductor for messages, if I'm able to send simple messages through a plant, and if I'm able to translate human language to something plant perceivable. For doing that, I um, worked with uh, natural language processing to analyze the sentence that you type in, to analyze the sentimental content, and to translate it in different light frequencies and also pulses that affect the plant, that causes different signals that we capture back to make it actually possible to send your response back. You can imagine a little bit like sending a Morse code through a plant or playing Chinese whisperer with your plant. Um, but what also was really helpful, starting to combine it with natural language processing, 
um, is if we want to go more into a future like this, we have to be able to deal with the complexity and this overlay of information. And there's not always just one message in a plant. And if you think about yourself, your envi the environment and context matters always a lot how you respond. And it's the same with a plant. So for natural language processing, we looked in the similarities of a conversation between humans and plants to um, enable us to interpret the signals in a better way for the future. But so far, the plan is actually not understanding the messages that are sent to it. It reacts to it, but it's not in sync with my intention. So our next step is to look into the opportunity to even measure the chemical signals of a plant, to see the reaction, to really understand the message, what the plant sends back to me. And that could lead for for applications like that we are not only able to see how the plant behaves in space, I might also send signals to space to help the plant to adapt it. Or we would be able to not only understand when a plant is attacked, attacked we might also just be able to send signals to help it to defend itself in a natural way. Or you might just also be able to talk to your apple and know which nutrition are currently in. But for doing all of that, we need a mediator between nature and us. And computation could be such a translator, translator to speak nature. And that could open us like opportunities for more biological and natural processes that could bring us in a more natural um, future. So I envision that the borders between the artificial and natural will blur and that we will be able to go in a future where technology enables us, but it's driven by nature. Thank you.